I wanted to share my experience of meeting a child and uh, what I learned out of having that immersive experience, you know, where I was actually with the family and uh, what did I learn, you know. So that's what I want to share. And I'm so sure it's going to really help you, uh, maybe give you more insights. At least it gave me a lot of insights. So I went to Gorakhpur for a workshop and uh, the family, Very, I'm very, you know, like grateful to the family who invited me and they allowed us to use their space for conducting the workshop. And I reached a day before, okay, so like the a day before the workshop. Now, when I reached there, I saw, I met the child in his house and uh, the main concern of the parents these parents was that the child doesn't eat everything he doesn't chew everything he eats only things that he likes to eat that's what the main concern was and then I was there with them and I was like going through the material you know the blocks and the links and we were like setting it up we were trying to understand what all would we need for the next day preparing up basically you know so this child was all over the place he was moving around he had access to things. He would pick it up. He would eat it, you know. So that was there. And uh, so all that was done. And I saw that parents wanted to welcome me. So they gave me kaju katli, you know. It's a sweet. And while that kaju katli was offered to me in a plate, this boy came and he picked up that piece and it went into his mouth. So the first one went, I don't remember how many of those kaju katlis did he eat, but that's a sweet. And I reached at around 7.30 at night. So that was the time that I reached and this is what he was doing. And I was like, okay, no problem. Then I finished, you know, getting the stuff ready, putting the toys in place. The parents helped me out to do that. And then we, I had to go back to the place where I was staying. So these parents said that we'll drop you. And I was sitting in the car behind and I needed water. So the parents, the mom got down and she said I'll get water for you she went she was buying the water and she bought kinder joy I'm not against any brand okay I'm just sharing what I saw so she got the kinder joy and she gave it to her son and he was very happy he ate the kinder joy and in my mind I'm like oh my god a while back he had a few kaju katlis now he's having kinder joy and you know you get that kurmura I don't know what to call it flat rice kurmura with jaggery so those were the laddus that she got also and uh, he asked for those laddus while they were dropping me to my place where I would stay and he asked for those laddus and he ate one laddu so what is going on in my mind is like oh he's had a kaju katli he's had sweets he's had the kinder joy he's having all of these things and uh, this boy is not eating so I was like, it's okay, Reena, park your thoughts, let them rest. We'll talk to them tomorrow. Because when I met them, I didn't meet them. Uh, I I just wanted to meet them, not like get into that therapist mode and tell them, do this, don't do that, whatever. I was just observing. I was just evaluating, not just the child, but I was also evaluating the family. So I was dropped to that place. And then in the morning, we came back. And I remember he was eating uh, dried dates, you know. So that's what he had in his hand, dried dates or dates, something like that. And he was eating it up. Jaggery, pieces of it, he loves it. So he was given that also. And I was like, my God, my God, such a lot of sweet is going into his body. And then imagine if this snacking is happening in between. Would he have his dinner? No, of course not. Would he have his breakfast if he's given all of it? No, he would not. So... Why am I sharing this is because the concern that they would always come to me and meet me and tell me was my child is not eating. But it was not about the child not eating and that the child demands only sweet things. He will eat only sweet things. They also made uh, carrot halwa. So he was eating that also. Anything that's sweet, he would eat it. You know, that's what the main concern. I mean, from the last, I think, one and a half year that I've been meeting them up, that's what I remember he used to hold, a, you know, those candy and put it into his mouth and keep licking it all the time you know that's what he did so every time there had to be something around his mouth earlier also and even now he wanted something the reason I'm sharing all of it is because 
then we had a discussion with the parents and i said i can give you exercises i can tell you what to do with your child at home but if this lifestyle is not in place you know if you're not uh, if, if the child is not to be you know you don't have to have so much of snacking in between meals and snacking also always sweets not judging just sharing because i was curious to know what do they do and uh, it was suggested to them to not give him those sweets not buy those kinder joys not buy those things what would he do and uh, you know what i'm trying to tell you it was such a small little thing where i remember the interaction was not so much about what therapies and what exercises to do but more about what kind of food to eat when to eat you know should you be snacking in between should he have the option also to snack in between these were some of the things that we discussed and then uh, the other main thing is sleeping so we spoke about what time does the pet child sleep what time does the child wake up and there was no fixed time to sleep there was no fixed time to wake up because parents thought no he would not sleep you know it's going to be difficult he he will not sleep beyond a particular uh, up to, he'll sleep only up to like 11 or 12 at night he would not sleep before that so all that i remember working on with this child was working on sleep working on food and then working on exercises but if i would have told them only do exercises and this snacking would have continued and this sleep was all erratic not at the proper time i wouldn't be able to help the family the way i really wanted to and the impact that i would get in the family i wouldn't have got it after around i think 10 days or 15 days this parent mailed me a message to me and he mentioned that he's now sleeping at the same time every day waking up at the same time every day he's also eating other things because they you know because they've stopped giving things that he was always asking for sweet 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 many a times i realize that you know as parents when a child is going to have a tantrum we know that you know if i don't give sweet he may have a tantrum to avoid that tantrum we give them whatever that they want which may not be helpful it may help at that time to manage the behavior but it does not help in the long run so my whole aim of sharing this particular incident with you is consider these are you giving your child is your child snacking in between is your child sleeping on time are you doing therapies at the same time every day if you're going to a therapy center do you have a fixed time sometimes it's like you know the child goes on mondays at 10 and thursdays at 12 and you know it's all hodgepodge and if it is that way i'll make a schedule and i'll have a visual schedule prepared for the child so that the child knows what is going to happen first what's going to happen next all that is prepared i feel routines are very important sleeping at the same time waking up at the same time setting up those biological rhythms going for potty every day at the same time using a visual schedule eating during meals not snacking in between sweets once in a week once in 15 days and then adding up therapies but if you're doing therapies 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 and all these other things are not taken care of the improvement takes a longer time real longer time why does it take longer because it's not just about therapies no it's the environment where the child stays and that environment needs to promote development so i don't know if this helped you but this was a small little thing which at least gave me a big insight maybe you know all these things already and sometimes these small little reminders are needed you know we do things as a part of our day to day routine and ritual sometimes you know it's like oh yeah i used to do that or how come i forgot oh i need to start that again if this is a reminder for you wonderful if this is something that helps you to set up that kind of a routine for your child awesome see how this helps you i wanted to share with you that only doing therapies and not working around the environment not providing the sensory diet not taking care of other things is not going to help do let me know in the comments what you feel have you got stuck in this kind of a loop ever where you thought you know where yeah we go out for travel or whatever i i don't know if that happens with you we we go out for a travel or a short vacation we start eating all of those sweets and then when you come back home to get back into the routine and put those junk away takes time so i don't know where you get this message 
you know, where in your journey of helping your child you get this message. My aim is that become aware of the sleep, the food, the snacking, the kind of diet that your child is eating. This child was so hyperactive all the time because of so much sweet going into his body. When he ate the right kind of food, he would show improvement, you know, and he is showing improvement. So that's all that I wanted to share and uh, hope this helps you. I'll see you again in the next week. Thank you. Before you go, I wanted to help you to help your child improve faster. Here are four things that you can do. One, you can subscribe to my channel so that whatever tips, strategies, insights, whatever I share, they come to you as notifications into your inbox and you are updated on a weekly basis. Two, you can buy my book, Looking Beyond Labels, Becoming a Mindful Parent. It is available on Amazon. It's a guidebook. It will guide you on really, really, really how to help you to help your child better. Three, I've done a lot of masterclasses which are all available as recordings on my website, kushi.net.in forward slash online hyphen events. You will be able to refer to a lot of courses related to sleep, toilet and potty training, sensory diet, oral motor challenges, emotional wellness and so many of those. And then number four would be we can meet and I can guide you. We can meet weekly. I meet parents weekly for some of my courses which you can find on kushi.net.in forward slash events and we can meet weekly you get to ask me your questions i share what to do how to help and it's all done in a group setup it's an amazing deep dive trying to understand your child and i'm i'm sure it transforms your perspective it transforms the way you work with your child and these are the four things that i feel would really help you thank you